So, what is the state of training in powered parachutes? I just wrapped up another season of pilot training and a lot is going on. I've developed new tools, new techniques, and have managed to train more pilots to an FAA powered parachute rating than anyone else in 2022. We're going to talk about how making things easier for students to digest makes it more likely that they will make it all the way through the process. And we're going to do that right now. Hi everyone! I know that it's been a while since I produced a video. It has been a wonderfully busy time and just difficult to get organized enough to produce something for you. However, there's a lot to talk about and video creation is an itch I find myself needing to scratch, so here we are. Truth is, I've been busy trying to make life less busy. Engineers are like that. They'll invest incredible amounts of time to streamline a process that repeatedly takes time, but not nearly as much time as creating the fix seems to take. The theory is that the fix will pay huge future dividends once it's in place. So what I've been working on over the past couple of years is flight training. And as I've been training pilots, I've been working on processes that make things easier for students. This has been my philosophy for a long time. For example, I really dislike the primitive E6B flight computer and remain amazed at how many flight instructors insist on teaching pilots how to use that nearly 100 year old piece of equipment before they will recommend them for a pilot rating. It seems particularly backward when nice, clean, and more accurate digital alternatives exist, especially when those alternatives are so accepted by the FAA that they could be used during official knowledge testing. Turns out that the old E6B is just the tip of the iceberg. It also seems like most of the training methods are still from the middle of the last century. Much of aviation training still consists of one-on-one -on -one tutoring, classrooms, hours-long videos, studying the test, and just old-fashioned hitting the books. And that is quite natural when you think about it. Most instructors teach how they were taught. If a CFI CFI taught him that knowing how to use the E6B is vital to becoming a real pilot, then there is a very good chance that the new CFI is going to train the same way. Some instructors will go so far as to change details of their training, but not the big strokes. That's because most flight instructors don't like teaching ground school in the first place. They, like almost all of their students, prefer flying. And if there's something that you don't care for, why spend too much energy on it? Just do what you have to do and then get back into the cockpit. Frankly, I've fallen into that trap myself. It's very easy to stay in a comfort zone until something comes along to requ that requires you to change your ways. So the reason motivating me to change my ways is that almost all of my students travel a distance to work with me. And once they get to me, I only have them for two to three weeks of training. It's a lot to turn on a fire hose of information and expect students to absorb all of it, then take a knowledge test, learn to fly, and be ready for a check ride in two weeks. I felt something had to change. And I did a lot of what I accused others of doing. I kind of worked around the edges of the problem. I started by sending training materials to students in advance of the class. I would send a copy of the FAA's Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, a copy of the FAA's Powered Parachute Flying Handbook, the Practical Test Standard for Powered Parachutes, and a big book of regulations called the FAR AIM. That was frustrating for students because other than the Powered Parachute Flying Handbook, most of the books had little directly to do with powered parachutes. Worse, critical information was buried within chapters of not so critical information. So that began my first big reimagining of training. I imagined not sending along four books. I thought, why not just write one book? that distills all of the information that the FAA requires a pilot to know, along with additional information that the FAA didn't even know about themselves, such as metastable stalls, rigging a powered parachute, and more. And why not cross-index the practical test standards appendix with the rest of the book in order to make it a great tool for applicants taking their practical tests? Well, as it turns out, those why nots were answered for me very quickly. I needed to learn how to lay out a book. I needed to learn about fonts. I needed to learn about how to illustrate a book, which added up to a lot of online training. 
After I figured out how to do all of those things, I had entry-level skill sets in book design, topography, vector illustration, photography, Photoshop, and technical writing. And all I had to do then was research the book and write the book and, and illustrate the book and lay out the book and produce the book. Since it wasn't my full-time work, it took me a long time. All told, it was an eight-year project from, hey, why not write a book to completion? I'm not exactly proud of that, but I'm happy that I finally got the book done. It obviously isn't a bestseller, but people have said kind things to me about it. But still, I knew I could make things easier. In the spring of 2021, I had a small epiphany. I remembered a college course I took way back in the day called Psychology of Learning, where I was introduced to the science of flashcards and spaced repetition. I remembered using what I learned to ace a lot of training courses I took after I entered the workspace. But instead of making my students each produce their own set of flashcards, why couldn't I produce one nice set, laminate them, and lend them to students when they showed up for training? After all, I've been a designated pilot examiner for powered parachutes since the program started. I figured that if anybody knew all the possible questions that could be asked during a check ride, it might be me. So I got to work again. Luckily, I already had built the illustrations and most of the content, so putting it all on flashcards, printing them out, and laminating them was mostly just time. But like all of these projects, it took more time than I imagined at the outset, but they really seemed to work. That summer, I built another set of flashcards for the knowledge test. Those were also a success. I was onto something. Still, the big limitation was that there was only one set of flashcards for the checkride and one set for the knowledge test. There had to be a digital way to distribute them. I surfed the internet way too much, but sometimes it helps. At the beginning of 2022, I learned about the concept of a learning management system, or LMS. I wasn't sure what that was, but it sure sounded like something I could use. It took quite a bit of research. Uh, my first telecon was with a company that said they could fix me up for $50,000 a year. Obviously, that wasn't the solution. Uh, that was more of a university and corporate solution. And other companies were similarly priced. And oddly, most of them did the same thing, namely offering a platform to host video classes. Now that is something that I believe is important, but not critical. More important was looking for an efficient, effective, and pleasant way for students to study and prepare for both the knowledge test and practical test. Eventually, I settled on the Brainscape platform, and I've been very happy with it. More important, the students who have used it have been happy with it. But of course, picking the platform is just the beginning of the project. I then had to recreate 1,264 flashcards to cover all of the information needed to prepare for both the knowledge test and the practical test. The Brainscape platform is very versatile, certainly a lot more versatile than a stack of index cards. In order to take advantage of that versatility, I had to up my game again. So these aren't your normal flashcards. They aren't just simple text. They are illustrated since they are teaching tools. There are probably about 600 different color illustrations either adopted or created specifically for the flashcards. The payoff for students is huge. I have already gotten a lot of very positive feedback on the flashcards. The feedback has come in the form of high knowledge test scores, happy students, and a happy designated examiner. The payoff for me is huge too. Using the flashcards means I don't have to do formal ground schools for students when I work with them. It turns out that most of the people I work with prefer to self-study anyway. And given the opportunity, many prefer to get the knowledge stuff done before they show up to fly. There's more work to do, of course. For example, I want to create a video course to supplement the flashcards. I'm producing this video in December, this, this one you're looking at, so time is opening up again and a custom video course is what I'm beginning to work on. My advice to other flight instructors is to create good tools for your students. Brainscape is a great platform, but another platform may see, suit your teaching style better. In fact, my first flashcards last year weren't on a platform. As I mentioned, the beta version of the flashcards were printed out and laminated. There are obvious limitations that set up but it proved the concept for me. The important thing is to never stop growing and to provide your students with the best tools you can to help them succeed. Anyway, 
If you're interested in powered parachute flight instruction in either the Midwest or in Florida, please visit the link to easyflight.com in the description. Flight instruction is the very best way to get introduced to piloting and I'm working constantly to make it easier and better for you. And if you got some value from this video, please remember to grace me with your upvote. Thanks so much for watching and blue skies.